Dan here, Scooter Erotica. Right, I just want to um, do a couple of quick videos. Haven't had a chance to do any videos for uh, quite a while. Been very busy at the garage doing dinos and one thing and another. So I've just got two or three videos that I'm going to put together uh, and get out there um, as soon as I can. This first one is about ignition faults. I don't know why, um, but I'm seeing a disproportionate amount of scooters coming in where people have booked in for a dyno and they think that they've got a problem with the jetting. And so they book a dyno and when it gets here, it becomes apparent that um, it's not actually a problem with the jetting, it's a problem with the ignition. And there's a couple of ways that you can spot this. And so I wanted to put a video out to help people sort of understand a couple of very simple tests that you can do to spot the most sort of common types of ignition fault uh, and how to diagnose those. So typically I'd have somebody ring up and say, oh, my scooter's got, it rides okay up to about 40 or 50 mile an hour. It's a little bit, you know, patchy, but on the whole, it's, it's all right. But when I get to sort of 50 mile an hour, it bogs out. So I think the jetting's a little bit rich. Can you take a look at it? I run it up on the dyno and immediately I see it's not the jetting that's the problem. It's simply that there is an ignition fault and the ignition isn't burning the fuel properly. So fix the ignition and you fix the problem. Um, now, a lot, like I say, a lot of people think that this is down to rich jetting and that's where the confusion comes in as, as the scooter owner then books in for a, a dyno session. So an easy way to tell if you have a problem with your ignition is to quite simply put the scooter on the stand, warm the engine up in neutral, and then once it's warm, rev it out. Rev it out full throttle and just hold it for two or three seconds. It'll sound like an eternity and you'll think you're damaging the engine. You're not. You're just revving the engine in neutral. And no matter whether it's jetted, you know, perfectly or whether it's jetted slightly rich or even very rich, even a very richly jetted scooter should rev out. It might be a bit smoky or whatever or chuggy, but it will rev out in neutral because there's no load on the engine. And, and like I say, you just gas it open and it'll rev. So... This is an example. I'll show you an example now of what happens if you have an ignition fault. And basically, you start the scooter up, you put it on, you know, on the standing neutral, you then rev it, and it sounds like it's hitting an artificial rev limiter. And that is basically where the ignition is breaking down and not sparking properly, and then causing the fuel to be unburned. So just have a listen to this example of a scooter with an ignition fault, trying to rev it out on the standing neutral, and, it, and the ignition actually bouncing and breaking down. Okay, so that's an example of a scooter with a faulty ignition. Conversely, um, this is an example of a scooter which is jetted slightly richly, um, but still revs out. You can hold the throttle on this and it will rev out. Have a listen. <laughs> So those are two examples of two completely different issues. One is a slightly richly jetted Vespa. One is a perfectly jetted Lambretta, but with an ignition fault. So before you sort of go tackling jet sky, I often see a lot of lads think, oh, my scooter's bogging down a bit. It must be running rich. I'll tackle the jets myself. That's even worse than booking it in for a dyno. Because if you book it in for a dyno, I'll be able to diagnose it and say, look, you've got a, uh, an ignition issue. 
But if you tackle the jetting yourself, often lads will down jet thinking they've got a jetting issue and then run it lean and nip it up and seize it and you don't want to be doing that. So if you think you've got some issues with jetting or, or with the ignition, pop it on the stand, rev it out in neutral and see if it revs. If it doesn't and it starts bouncing, you've got an ignition issue. It might be something as simple as a faulty CDI. Um, it could be, uh, you know, the the pickup on the stator is starting to break down and load, or you might have a bad earth somewhere and you just need to track and trace through the system and find it. Um, but usually they're fairly simple to find. They just take a bit of time, unfortunately. And so if I'm booked in for dyno sessions and I've got, you know, two or three dyno sessions booked in that day, um, it can take a bit of time to find a fault. And so sometimes I'll either have to ask the customer to do it themselves and come back at a later date for the dyno that they were originally booked in for. Or if I have a bit more time or they want to leave the scooter, I can find the fault and I can fix it for them and then dyno it. The other type of fault that I see quite often, and this one's a bit more difficult because um, you won't necessarily know that you've got this fault because it doesn't present itself in, in a way that uh, an ignition which is breaking down under load and hitting an artificial rev limiter. It doesn't, it doesn't present itself like that. The other type of fault I see is where there is a misalignment between the height of the pickup on the stator and the, uh, the firing magnets on the, on the flywheel. This I predominantly see on Lambrettas, not so much on Vespers. And when there is that misalignment issue, you actually find that, and if, a, for example, a scooter should be on a fixed 17 degrees static ignition sometimes you'll see you know a degree or so movement on in either way but really you shouldn't see a tremendous amount of movement and if you do you don't want it going in the wrong direction so for example if you set a scooter at static 17 and it has a degree or so of movement you want it to be going in the direction of 16 so from static 17 rev it up and it comes back to 16 at peak revs it's no bad thing it'll probably look a little bit cooler but if it's going in the opposite opposite direction and it's going opposite in a large way, then that's a problem and that needs fixing. And I had that issue with a Lambretta, which was, I think it should have been a static 17, but when I looked into it for the guy, for the customer, it was strobing up at tick over at around 14 degrees. And then when he revved it up, it went right through the rev range and incrementally moved up to a peak revs. It was picking out something like 19 or 20 degrees. So he'll have been losing performance at the bottom end and running hot at the top end. So that was an alignment issue. I spoke to um, Anthony Tams at Scootronics. He sells these fabulous little um, packers for the um, stator plate. They come in different thicknesses and I knew what thickness I needed. I knew how far out the pickup was on this particular one. I'd measured it all. And so I fitted a two, mil two millimeter packer plate behind the stator plate. That raised up the, the whole stator plate and the pickup and everything lined up and then it strode up perfectly. But so those are a couple of different ways you can tell if you've got an ignition fault. Strobing is one, uh, simply revving it on the stand is the other. So the fairly simple fixes, but keep an eye out for those sorts of things and it'll save you either booking for dyno sessions that you don't need or um, leaning jetting off when really it doesn't need leaning off and causing yourself a whole piston. So hope that information is of help. Um, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below and uh, see you on the next video.